Hello fellow outsiders. First off, thank you to Simply Safe for sponsoring today's episode. I'll talk more about them later and how they've helped us in a big way. If you've watched this channel for any length of time, you'll probably have noticed that the property we work on is isolated. In fact, we can go for months and sometimes years without seeing another soul out here. But once in a blue moon, we do come across the odd person. One of them, a lost hunter, was extremely grateful to see us. A couple winters ago, the hunter became separated from his hunting party early in the morning. Unfortunately, he was unfamiliar with the land and therefore couldn't get a proper bearing. To make matters worse, he had forgotten his GPS, snowshoes, and survival gear. In desperation, he fired his shotgun into the air. He hoped that his hunting party would hear and return the signal, but they were too far away by then. So the hunter, who was in his late 70s, struggled all day through three feet of snow with no clue as to where he was going. Lost, alone, and exhausted. Long story short, he heard our chainsaws in the distance and started to slog in our direction. Eventually, we heard his cries for help and came to his aid. It was all he could do to keep from breaking down in tears. He was exhausted, but incredibly happy to be found. We put him on the sledge and I towed him out behind the snowmobile. Eventually, we reunited the hunter with his buddies, who were relieved beyond words to see him. Like I said before, it's rare that we come across other people out here. But when we do, they usually react in one of two ways. Some are extremely grateful to be found, like the lost hunter, while others don't want to be found at all. These are the nefarious characters. Round here we call them thieves and poachers. They sneak into places they shouldn't be to take things that aren't theirs and kill animals they were never permitted to hunt. It's at least of some comfort to know that these people are few and far between, but they still make the rounds from time to time. However, I'm pleased to say that most people are good-hearted, honest folk who make a point of looking out for each other. Round here, we call them our neighbors and friends. But despite there being many a watchful eye in the area, attuned to any track that is out of place or unfamiliar face, the thieves and poachers sometimes get through anyway. Which is what happened to my grandfather. A few years ago, and under cover of darkness, someone started poaching deer on his land. If that wasn't already bad enough, they stumbled upon his woodshed. That's when they began to take his firewood. Now, stealing firewood from an old shack in the middle of nowhere may not seem all that terrible to some. At least it wasn't to the thief who took it. But you see, my grandfather used that wood to heat his home and provide for his family. Although we did our best to keep our eye out after that, little bundles of wood would sometimes disappear. I think the intruder was hoping we wouldn't notice. But then came the big hit. Once again, under the cover of darkness, the thief somehow got a truck and trailer back to the woodshed. Without anyone to stop him, he stole a large amount of my grandfather's firewood. Now my grandfather is a tough guy, and he's lived through a lot. He was born in the midst of the Great Depression, and he's been a farmer and logger all his life. There isn't much he hasn't seen or been through over the last century. But when he showed up that morning only to discover what had been taken, well, it just about broke him. Well into his early 90s, my grandfather faithfully tended the forest and logged its dead trees. It took lots of blood, sweat, and dirt to produce that firewood, but it was something that he loved to do, and it is the only thing he knows. It just doesn't seem fair, does it? That a thief can steal in one hour what it took an honest man one year to work for, and all we had to go on was a set of tire tracks in the mud, but it wasn't enough to locate the wood or the thief who stole it. We felt helpless to do anything except shake our heads and wonder how someone could be so callous. About a year later, we had a possible break in the case. It was one early winter morning when my grandfather witnessed two men entering the property from the western edge. They quickly slipped out of view as they passed into a frozen cedar swamp, a normally difficult section of land to traverse, except in the dead of winter when everything is frozen up. My grandfather wasn't physically able to follow them, but fortunately I was there as well. And as soon as my grandfather told me what he had seen, I immediately jumped onto the snowmobile so that I could pursue them. Since I was setting up to film that day before all of this happened, I had a GoPro on my head and was able to record the chase. Part of it anyway. I had picked up their tracks and followed them to the tree line where I had to abandon the sled. 
I remember being angry, knowing that these two men were probably the thieves who had stolen from my grandfather, but I also felt hopeful that I might catch them this time. However, it was somewhere around here that common sense began to kick in. Since it was early winter, the swamp only had a thin covering of ice with which to bear my weight. The two men wore snowshoes and had no problem traversing the swamp, but in my haste to pursue them, I had left my own pair of snowshoes behind. I moved as quick, light, and quiet as I could, but I knew that it was inevitable that I would eventually fall through into the knee-deep water and muck. I also began to wonder about my decision to chase these two men through the thicket. I knew that they were probably armed and not wanting to be discovered. I figured that they were here to poach this time, considering that they weren't headed in the direction of the woodshed. What if they mistook my movement in the brush as that of a deer or coyote coming at them? In which case, the last thing I needed was for them to be trigger happy. I wanted to catch the criminals who had stolen from my grandfather, but I also didn't want to wind up face down in the swamp. It was as I began to mull these things over that my friend had caught up to me. Once he joined up with my path, he began to fall through where I had already weakened the ice. That's when I decided it was safest to backtrack out of there. I jumped back onto my sled and skirted around the swamp, where I picked up the trail of the two men again. When I caught up to them, I saw that they did in fact have rifles with them, but as I drew closer still, I realized that they weren't intruders at all. It turned out that they were simply family members who had come to check on things last minute. When my grandfather originally saw them, they were too far away for him to recognize, and he had either forgotten or was unaware of their visit that day. I wasn't sure if I was relieved to see them, or disappointed that the thieves were still out there somewhere. A bit of both, I think. It was from that point that my family began to wonder if there was any feasible way that we could secure the property. More specifically, the woodshed. We agreed that trail cams were a good start, but we so desperately wanted to put an actual security system in place, one that could scare the thieves away and immediately alert us to their presence. It was a nice thought, but we weren't even sure that such a system existed for an off-grid application like ours. It was then that I found out about SimpliSafe, which is an incredibly effective, reliable home security system that will make sure your home is safe, or in this case, my grandfather's woodshed. By the time I had finished telling the Simply Safe team about what happened to my grandfather, they not only wanted to sponsor this video, but more importantly, they wanted to help. I told them that I wanted to use their system to guard my grandfather's woodshed, and they were more than happy to send me their kit, knowing that it was going to such a worthy cause. Today, my dad and I are going to set it up. Now, this isn't normally the context that a home security system is designed for especially considering how many openings this old shed has. But I know the sensors are well suited to cover all the angles, even in a situation as challenging as this one. There's the base station. Wow, there's a lot of stuff in here. See, these are the proximity sensors that I'm hoping for. Yeah, yeah, yeah there is a ton of stuff there. Yeah, yeah, I'll be using these for sure. And uh, I know there's motion sensors. Yeah, there's the motion sensors, so I'll be using those for sure as well. Yeah, there's a lot of thoughtful features here. Uh, like this is a sensor that you can actually put near your pipes, and uh, it actually senses oh. or warns you if your pipes are about to burst. Wow. Uh, water sensor, and so you can put that in your basement, and the system will actually tell you, I guess, if uh, if your basement's flooding. That's really cool. Wow. Obviously not applicable for us, but uh, for a home, this is. It's pretty cool stuff. Oh, and this is a, a glass break sensor, um, and it's programmed to hear the frequency of breaking glass, and so it'll it'll set the alarm off if it senses oh, okay. breaking glass. But anyway, yeah, there's lots of stuff in here. Um, but uh, we'll mainly be focusing on the uh, motion sensors, contact sensors, and we've got the, the key fobs here to arm and disarm. So, yeah, I think we're ready to go. 
The kit also includes cameras, fire alarm, carbon monoxide detector, and more. What drew me to Simply Safe is that it is equipped for worst case scenarios, meaning that it will still work without power or if the phone lines are cut or if the Wi-Fi goes down, which is good because none of those things exist out here anyway. It will even still work if the system itself is attacked. Okay, I'll need uh, screws. Okay. Simply Safe is able to operate in these Thanks conditions for two main reasons. Number one, because it runs on battery power when it needs to. And secondly, instead of being hardwired into a communication system, which can be tampered with, it has a built-in cellular connection. The great news is that although we don't have power, internet, or phone lines out here, the shed does happen to be in an area with cell phone reception, which is all we need for the system to work for us. The first thing we did was to set up the wireless hub, which is the brains of the security system. Okay. In addition to being a system that can operate in an off-grid context, this product includes other features that caught my attention. For example, with Simply Safe, your home is professionally monitored 24-7. If anything happens, they'll make sure the police are called. What's more, they have fair and honest prices with no hidden fees or contracts. So for 50 cents a day, you can have around-the-clock protection. I also found setup and operation of the system to be surprisingly easy and intuitive. Backdoor. Entry sensor. Detective. Now choose a name. After I had finished connecting all the sensors with the hub, I was ready to place them. The first device I installed was a contact sensor at the main door. Normally, this little unit is used to detect if a window or door has been opened. Perfect. But as you can probably tell, there aren't any windows or doors here. However, I used the contact sensor to string a trip wire across the opening. So what we've done here is we've bolted a piece of sheet metal onto the back side of this post and so that we can adhere the sensor to it. Uh, it would just stick better on the metal than it would on the wood here. And we've just placed the contact sensor here on top. We're going to have a little piece of strong thread that we tie across the doorway. And so when someone walks through, they'll trip the trip wire. It'll pull the sensor off the top and it'll trigger the system. Okay, so we've got the sensor on the door right there. We've got a string going across all the way to the other post there. I'm looking for it here. You're getting close. Oh! Where is it? Oh. There it is. That is extremely hard to see, so that's great. It means that in daylight or obviously at nighttime, no one will be able to see that. I appreciate how small and sleek these contact sensors are. When placed behind the posts, no thief will be able to see them, at least not until they've already triggered the system. After placing the contact sensors, we moved on to the motion sensors. There we go. Since animals often pass by the shed, we had to orient the motion sensors so that they will only detect motion from within the shed. The good news is that most animals never step foot inside the door. Smells too much like human, I guess. Smaller animals like birds and squirrels do venture into the shed, but are too small for the system to take notice. So we're covered that way as well. Back door. Motion sensor. Alarm off. After testing out the sensors, my dad and I are confident that the system will be more than capable of catching any future intruders. If the tripwire doesn't get them, the motion sensors certainly will. Most importantly, I'm glad that we were finally able to give my grandfather some well-deserved peace of mind.
In the event of a break-in, the system will instantly notify the Simply Safe Monitoring Center, who will in turn notify the user. If the user can't be reached, the authorities will be contacted instead. To make our security system truly self-sufficient, I connected my solar panel to the hub to make sure the battery is always topped up. If you'd like to learn more about Simply Safe, you can visit simplysafe.com slash the outsider to learn more. There's just one more thing we wanted to do for my grandfather before we turn our attention back to the log cabin build this year, and that was to gather some more firewood for his shed. It was only recently that my grandfather officially hung up his chainsaw, but only after stockpiling several winters worth of wood for himself. Nowadays, the family has taken up the torch by adding wood to the pile whenever we can.
with my grandpa's stockpile once again built up to its former glory, we can all rest a little easier, knowing that our security system is keeping an eye on things when we're gone. Well, that's it for today. Until next time, my friends.